This is nice. Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and right now we are headed to our local salvage auction to check out a really unique lot. It's a like new E63 AMG S, and it's a car that had some front end damage, but it looks like it comes with every single part necessary to rebuild it. Now I've seen lots like this online every once in a while, but I've never actually seen one in person, so I wanna take you today and check it out. Oh, hold on one second. Not again. Sam Crack! Hello? What are you doing? I thought I just told you to give it an oil change and go home. Oh, I just thought I smelt an exhaust leak, so I was just checking that out. Oh yeah, I believe that. All right, okay. How do you catch me every single time? Simply Safe protects my home. It let me know that someone tripped one of the sensors in the garage, and then I could hear some noises coming from the garage camera. Simply Safe is nothing like your typical security company, and that's a great thing, because there's no contracts. They don't force you to lease equipment that you don't even need. You get to pick out the equipment according to your living space, and you own it. It's all very reasonable and extremely intuitive. Everything installs in literally seconds, and most of it operates wirelessly. In case of an emergency, the system is monitored by professionals ready to send help your way. One of my favorite features is the two-way walkie-talkie-like system on the expandable cameras. In a high-tech world, everyone should have high-tech security. Be sure to check out Simply Safe by using my link in the description box below or by visiting simplysafe.com slash samcrack. Big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video and keeping my place Grinch-proof. Sam Crack? More like Sam Hack. Grinch, I can still hear you. Oh, simply safe. All right, we are here, and what I noticed that is really, really funny and ironic, right in the window, they've got the details of this McLaren. Now, I'm gonna post this McLaren up on the screen right now, actual details from the lot online, but I was about this close to buying that car. The main issue is that it had a destruction title, so I just ended up passing on it, but they had a really cheap buy it now price on it and everything, so this will make for a good parts car for somebody. Walking right out the door, we've got a Tesla Model 3 right there. It looks really good from this angle. We'll go check it out in a minute, but the other thing that we have right in front of us is the car we were looking for, the E63 AMGS. That's quite a mouthful and it looks pretty much just like it did in the photos what we could expect from an insurance company car look at how it's sitting low likely an airline let loose on an air suspension it's my best guess same thing that happened on my Audi RS7 but the front this is what I really want to see is how the frame looks I don't see anything crooked here on the passenger side you can see the bracket that connects the frame rail right there everything looks really straight obviously we've got you know coolers and stuff missing brackets loose lines open kind of to be expected from something which I'm guessing somebody started repairing this car and they just never finished it so right there again frame rail bracket everything looks really nice and straight this is a great car for somebody to rebuild, especially with all those parts. We'll see if we can't find those in a moment. This thing looks and smells brand new. Now, funny enough, at first, you know, I saw the curtain airbag sticking out like this. I thought it was deployed. These are not deployed, these curtain airbags. These could have been deployed and replaced while the work was being performed before the car was totaled out. Uh, but we've got curtain airbags that are completely good we've got the headliner that is missing but could very well be in that parts bin and a lot of stuff is disassembled here but nothing that doesn't seem like you couldn't bolt or snap it back into place the door sills here the trim piece is missing looks like all of the uh, seat wiring was undone here a lot of the times you have that happen because you're trying to repair the seat electronics here and whatnot you got to undo it so that it doesn't throw codes while you're working on it and then complicate the process further we can see that the seat belts did lock up but man this is an amazing car really nice spec 
The leather is in brand new condition. Whoever wins this is going to do really, really well with it, especially with all the parts. I'm not exactly sure why this AMG is here. A lot of times when you see a bin of parts and you see a car that's in pretty repairable condition, it was at a body shop, they began the repairs, and somewhere between the owner of the car, the insurance company, and the body shop didn't agree on numbers, didn't agree on the way that they were gonna repair it, so then the insurance company just went ahead, they wrote it off as a total loss, and they already bought those parts, so they come along with the car. I do wanna go over there, check out that Model 3, and I wanna just show you something that I found over here in the distance. I had no clue. Where is it? This was here. Do you see what that is right there? We're gonna definitely check that out. This is a uh, Rich Rebuild's dream right here. I've been talking to him about the Model 3, and it's just kinda new to start messing with as far as rebuilds go, unless you got two or three of them sitting next to each other. But here is what happened to this car. Obviously hit on the side. We've got the corner suspension pushed in here. This is all nice and taped off. Remember, remember the salvage yard etiquette. We do not go and remove tape. If we can access the car from another side, that's how we do so. Now, with no power, a lot of the times these cars don't have power. I'm not sure how you get, oh look, maybe we can get in. Oh, maybe we can't get in, I don't know, let's see. Someone was kind enough to open up the Model 3 for us. Let's take a quick look inside. Currently, they're disassembling some of this stuff so that they could get a better evaluation of all the parts and everything that comes with it. This car might have been, again, at one of these shops where they disassemble things prior to it entering the yard. But let's check out the front. Looks pretty much brand new, this one. Get your huge screen right here. A lot of airbags deployed in this car. We got both seat airbags, curtain airbags. If we come around here, front though is perfect. So. That is our Tesla Model 3. Rear bumper for it looks to be like right over here. So a lot of good usable parts, but when you sustain a hit this hard to the rear quarter and door and all that's pushed in, can you fix it? Yeah, is it worth fixing it? I'll let you guys decide. Let me know in the comment section below. Man, check this thing out. I've never seen anything like it. How in the heck do you think that happened? I'm guessing it got rear-ended really hard. But actually, it's not the truck I wanted to look at. There's something behind this truck that I think might make for a good rebuild project for someone out there. Check this thing out. Gotta be careful. It's kind of muddy where I'm stepping. What is this? I can't even tell. Maybe from that wheel. Can we tell what it is from the wheel? Not yet. Okay, I think we can figure it out. If you guys figured it out before I did, pat yourself on the back. This is a Lexus, I think it is an IS250, IS200, whatever they call these now. But man, that is not good. But someone out there could rebuild this car. All right, that last burn car might have been too good. This is the one that I think we're gonna be keeping an eye out on when it comes up to the auction block. Look at this thing. I didn't think we could tell what it was, but then I saw that there's a, a fraction of a wheel, which that doesn't give us much of anything to go off of, but then there's a whole wheel here, and there's also a caliper in there. Can anybody tell what this is based off the wheel and caliper? More than anything, I think I'd like to just find out what this is. This is a tough one. A lot of the cool cars at the auction today seem to be burned. Here is another one back here. A really nice Porsche Panamera that yeah, it looks like engine fire. Wow. Look at this. It burnt a hole in the hood. Man, this is crazy. All of these burn cars. Now the interior, again, remember auction car etiquette. Somebody did this. Whoever did that, I'm going to try and tape that back up. Don't do that. We can try and get in through the rear here. That is what you do if you want to see what the inside of an auction car looks like that's been taped off. So the interior did suffer a little bit of damage in the front there. Oh man, you gotta replace a lot of that stuff. What sort of Panamera is this? Oh, this is a nice one too, a GTS. What a sad situation when you see a nice car like this, the big burn hole through it. This would still make for an amazing parts car though because you got a lot of great body parts. Really, it's only this section of the car and as we've seen in some other videos online here, a lot of the times these burned engines still have a lot of great components in them. And on a Porsche, you can bet those sell for a lot. All right, I know we'll see at least one more burn car before we leave here. We've already seen a few. So let's try and find something that would actually make for a good solid rebuild project that didn't catch on fire. All right, I see something kind of cool behind this Jetta. And it's a car that I've always been interested in, don't know a whole lot about. 
but I like EVs, I like electric cars, and I always thought this was interesting, the BMW i3. Now, I wanna start with all the writing on the windows, all of this stuff that you see. A lot of people ask me, hey, what does this mean, what does that mean? You know, this says like RO. I can't tell you exactly what all that stuff means. I really don't know, but when you see writing like this, liability accepted needs tear down, that typically means that there was some sort of consideration on this car to actually go ahead and repair it. Now we obviously haven't seen its really bad side because everything seems to be pretty good so far. Oh, here's its bad side right here. So if we look at the side, clearly side swiped, but we look at the quarter, the quarter's really pretty nice. And even though the frames around the door probably sustain some damage here, stuff isn't that bad. This isn't how an accident happens where you see the door skins just pulled off the car like this. This clearly is something that a body shop took a nice look at and decided, hey, it's gonna end up costing this much. They went back to insurance, insured said, forget it, total it. And this is the sort of stuff that makes for a great rebuild project. Let's see what the inside looks like and Look, no airbags right off the bat. That's a great sign. Everything's lighting up. I've got my foot on the brake. The engine start is right here. Hold remote control to steering column. Okay. Can't figure this one out, although it seems like a really nice car. This is definitely what I would call a contestant for a good rebuild project if this is what you're into. Although these seats, look how thin they are. I mean, look, here's my hand. And here's how thin a seat in a BMW i3 is. I think they do that for weight savings. This is the sort of stuff I end up putting on my watch list because you never know if it's gonna end up going cheap. Our motorcycle and power sports section over there, something I don't know a whole lot about, but this definitely popped out to me, an Audi TT. I'm not sure what type of TT it is. Let's check out the rear and see if we can find a badge. A TTS. These actually can be made really, really quick. Now again, auction car etiquette. Tape on this side, that means we enter in the side with no tape. So the reason why there's probably tape is because the battery's dead, yeah. Notice how this window didn't pop down when I opened the door. Wow, this car's really clean on the inside and no airbags. A little bit over 30,000 miles, but it was punched kind of nice here in the front. You could see where the crash support is. It pushed the rail over just a little bit though. Not too terrible that I can see. Let's go check out the other side. Yeah, the other side is, uh, yeah, it's over a little bit. So I think this is something you definitely could repair. If you got it for the right price, you can make this a fun and fast little all-wheel drive car. Correct me, but I think like with a tune, you can make these cars like 330, 350 horsepower. So it is a pretty quick little car. And again, if you get it for a few thousand dollars, that's a deal. All right, making our way back up front before we find that green Lambo that we saw earlier, I like to just make a quick trip into the garage right there. Sometimes they have other cool cars in there. Last time there was a 488 Ferrari. It still might even be in there. Let's go find out. And it's still here, the 488. If you remember last time, all we could see was the bottom of the wheel. Now we got a, a lot better look. The tarp has been lifted a little bit. This thing was in something major. Look, this is the windshield right here into the cabin. Wow all the parts over there on the pallet. Let's see if there's any more we could see on the opposite side. Rear is in really nice shape, but that's about all on this car, unfortunately. At least the engine's on the back side here. So, some great parts there. And look at the front frame on this. Ooh, since last time we were here, Tony was also here. And he gifted us with his signature on the BMW i8 that comes with a lot of extra nice Copart dust. Battery was dead last time we looked at it. And it's got some sort of color changing wrap on it. We've waited long enough, we gotta take a look at my favorite car out here by far, the Murcielago in one of these Verde Mantis or Verde Ithaca, whatever they call this color. This is by far my favorite color Lamborghini. And this car looks amazing from the front end. The sides look pretty darn good, but the rear is taped off. Can you guess 
what is wrong with it. I kind of hinted earlier. It is another fire car. Look at the carbon fiber body here. It is just completely, look, it's, it's like paper at this point. And really, it didn't take out a lot of the car, but like, ooh, oh my God. Here's one of our coolers right here, looks pretty good. I don't like that exhaust very much, but I'm sure you could fix that. Anyway, this is a car that unfortunately, since it's taped off, since we are respecting the auction etiquette, we're not going to start peeling the tape back, but I'm pretty certain, let's see if we can't get a good look from one angle here, the interior. Oh, it's really tinted. It's tough to see, but the interior looks pretty much perfect. This car is amazing. I'm so glad we came down here and ran into it. I'm very serious when I say that this is my favorite Lamborghini in my favorite color. There are a couple other pretty nice cars in the coming attractions section. We'll take a quick look at this Panamera here. And as a matter of fact, I actually think I saw this car when I came here to look at something else recently, but it was not quite ready for sale yet. Yep, this is the same car. This is one of those question mark cars. What is wrong? Why is it here at Copart? Let's see if the inside tells us anything. Smell inside is pretty good. Doesn't seem to be a flood car. Just a big question mark car. Could end up being a good deal, but a nice looking, pretty much new Panamera. And then there's one more exotic at the end there. We've got a Maserati Gran Turismo. It's a coupe from this far back. All I could see is the damage right in the front corner here. Let's see how bad that is. No, it looks, looks pretty decent. Wow, the wheels are really nice. And I love red brake calipers with white lettering. Great combination. If I had to guess, it looks like somebody put this back together. We've got a missing shield here, missing grill down here. You could see inside there. Usually behind fenders, there's liners and stuff. And this is also held together with zip ties. So something you'd have to take a closer look at if you're considering on bidding. Look at that rear wheel. It's kind of cracked up. This is what the fender should look like. I don't even know what that issue was on the top part. So yeah, definitely a car with some driver's side damage, something that you want to get inspected or inspect yourself before making any decisions. Before we head out of the Copart yard, we got to pay our respects one last time to the Murcielago, probably one of the best V12 Lamborghinis ever produced and in this verde, whatever they call it, color. It's absolutely incredible. Too bad it caught on fire. Let's give it one last look. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that trip out to the salvage auction. If you did, be sure to give it a huge like. I'd like to show a little bit of a variation of cars, the good stuff, the really bad stuff, so you understand not everything is good for a rebuild project at the salvage auction, but there are definitely a few good candidates out there today. And I might have just ended up bidding on and winning something. But remember, we gotta finish our projects first. Now, regarding that Lamborghini, it's really interesting because I posted this picture right here up on Instagram and somebody that knew the owner locally DM me and let me know that even though the fire was in the engine bay, it wasn't actually an engine fire. The fire started by using a battery trickle charger, which is really crazy. I use trickle chargers and battery chargers all the time. But anyway, thought I'd give you that little tip on that car in case maybe you're interested in bidding on it. Again, want to give a big thanks to the guys over at Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out using my link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you very soon.